when someone has one of the worst reactions to stimulants, tense jaw, dry mouth, zero benefit. It's rare, but it happens. Today, I'm walking you through when and exactly why I prescribe non-stimulant medication and which one I choose based on your specific presentation. Stratera or Atomoxetine? It's my first non-stimulant choice. Why? It's usually the one insurance want people to start first. The general recommendation is to take one 40 milligram capsule for three days and then increase to two for 80 milligrams a day from that moment forward. The problem is this one causes really bad stomach upset. So I've learned to just wait on going up on the dose and just keep people at 40 milligrams just to make sure that they're tolerating the medication okay. So always tell your practitioner or another doctor that might be prescribing you medication that you're taking it just to be sure that there's no drug interactions with it. For people it does work well with, it also treats their anxiety, which is a win. If patients don't tolerate Stratera, then it's on to Kelbri. The best part is there's no stomach upset, and when I do get them there, it usually works great. Nine out of 10 are probably on the autism spectrum, so take it for what it's worth. Wellbutrin, otherwise known as bupropion, is a medication I use to treat depressive symptoms that surround ADHD. SSRI really isn't gonna help them, but alongside their extended release stimulant, adding on Wellbutrin can work really well in combination. I usually do not go higher than 150 milligrams because the two medications together can sometimes be too activating. Not gonna work for the more anxious types. But for the more inattentive types, the ones with seasonal depression, this could be the best fit for them. Guampacine is an alpha-2 agonist. I use it from time to time, like motor restlessness or skin picking. There's certain situations for it, but it's really not my go-to. I usually have patients asking me for it. It really has its place for hyperactive children, like the ones you got to peel off the walls. Basically, it's non-controlled and not too risky to prescribe, which makes people really happy they can go home and brag to people on Reddit. The clinical reality tends to differ from what you read online. So when do I choose a non-stimulant first line? If there's obvious signs or a history of sensitivity to other stimulants or someone says they're really sensitive to medications, these are all reasons why I would probably start with a non-stimulant, especially if these reactions were extreme, like I can't have caffeine because it keeps me up all night long, I'm super anxious, no medications agree with me. A patient with autism and extremely high sensory sensitivities, it may be wise to start with a non-stimulant first. For comorbid substance abuse disorder, I find that patients do really well with the stimulant medication so long as that they're at the right place in their recovery. Treating the ADHD, even with a control, will lower the risk of relapse. The big takeaway, non-stimulant medications are not second-class options. For some people, especially those in the autism spectrum, for them, it's the best choice. Always remember, it's not so much the medication, but who gets what. The question isn't what worked well for your friend, it's what's gonna work best for your brain. You might be in that 10% of patients that does best with a non-stimulant. And if that's the case, that's a total win. It's gonna be way easier to get your prescription from the pharmacy because it's not a control. I'm glad you're taking your ADHD seriously by watching this video, because if you wanna learn how deadly it can actually be, check out this one right here. And thanks for watching. Once again, my name is Jonathan Murphy, psychiatric nurse practitioner. I'll see you next time.